Hello, hello. So this is going to be um Hi everybody. So I am back to kind of start talking about each of the portions of the timeline that I put together trying to narrow down um more specific if we can from what I've already done research wise with the jubilees and the timing of uh, the 70th week and all of that. So this is a secondary video to the one that I did several days ago, which was the pattern in the mount and uh, exodus overlaying world history. This was completely fascinating to me when I found it. And I actually found this quite a while ago. But I did include part of what I'm going to discuss in two different books, The Jubilee and Ezekiel's time, uh, Temple and Daniel's 70 Weeks. And the reason I included it is because it relates specifically to the end times. So this video is probably going to be titled something about uh, Moses and Joshua and Ezekiel and Jesus, Exodus and the end times, <laughs> something about that. So this is a timeline that I have included in my research. I have three timelines included in my research. This is one of them. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if you watched it, don't take this as the gospel truth as these dates are set in stone. This is just one of the sets of data that I was working with. And it happened to be the, time, the spreadsheet where I compiled all of the additional stuff I've been working on. I had to put it all in one spot and choose one spot to start. So that's what I did. And I put it on the furthest date out so that the rest of it I can kind of tweak as needed see if it would even work, uh, but I had to start somewhere, so this is where I started. So don't hang your hat too much on the dates so much as just what they represent in this video, because again, this is, as the spreadsheet is titled, the Jubilees overlaid by the pattern in the Mount in Exodus. The awesome part about scripture, and this is going to take us into the book of Joshua as well, because there's a starting point and there's an ending point. In Exodus, the starting point would be the giving of the law on Sinai in Exodus 19. After the giving of the law, the speaking of the law uh, by the voice of angels, it was not the voice of God, it was the voice of angels. We learned about that in Acts and Galatians and Hebrews. Three different parts of the New Testament tell you that the law was given by the disposition of angels. Uh, Hebrews 2, Galatians Three and Acts seven. I'll tell you that. Um, so anyway, when the law was spoken on Sinai, it was spoken to the people. Then Moses was commanded to go up the mount forty days. So here's your starting point. And this is do not pay attention to the years in this. I'm talking about the overlay of world history as shown in the pattern in Exodus and into Joshua. So don't look at the years right now. I'm just going to explain the overlay from the book of Exodus and the timeline of world history. So here's your starting point. The starting point is the giving of the law. Then 40 days Moses was up the mount receiving the tables of stone handwritten by the finger of God. When he comes down the mountain, he thought he and Joshua thought they were being attacked because the people were rabble rousing. Come to find out, they were dancing around a golden calf naked and doing all of this strange God worship. So the next two days after Moses came down, he promptly smashed the tablets when he saw Israel behaving foolishly. And then the Levites were given the commission to go deal with the people. And they did. And there were a whole bunch of people slain. Until they finally got the point that Moses and the Levites meant business and they quit. Two days uh, to deal with the people and to try to make amends uh, to God for the people to intercede. God's like, come on back up. So this next period of 40 days is Moses going back up the mount to receive. He had to take with him the tables of stone that time and write them out himself. Uh, but he spent another 40 days up the mount getting the law again. At the end of that period of time, Moses came down and his face shone like the sun. 
so much so that the people could not look upon him, and he had to cover his face. The rest of the book of Exodus is then a next, uh, the next period of time. Uh, the Jews are going to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness, during which time the whole rest of the book is talking about the construction of the tabernacle. It talks about the giving, the offering uh, that was given to acquire all of the things that would need in the, to, to be used in the construction of it, including like the dyes and the, the wool for the garments and all of that. So this is the pattern of Exodus, is you have a starting point, the giving of the law. Moses is up the mountain 40 days, getting the tables of stone, comes back down, smashes them because the people are rowdy and um, faithless toward God, and two days to deal with them. Then he's back up the mountain for 40 days. When he comes back down, he's uh, previewing what Christ would look like. During the same time period, you know, the end of this period of time would take you to this specific, if you look at the years, this specific jubilee year. Between this jubilee year and this jubilee year is when Christ rose in glory. So Moses, at the end of that period of time, if you overlay world history in real time, it points to the time period that Christ rises in glory. So that's the, the Moses, his face shining, uh, people couldn't look at him, all of that. So anyway, the next 40 days, uh, the next period of 40, rather, is going to correlate to Israel wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, during which time they build the tabernacle. At the end of that period of time, they enter the land. This is Joshua 4.19. They came up out of the Jordan and camped in Gilgal uh, in the east border of Jericho, 10th day of the first month. And then there was a cotton quest for Canaan for seven years. At the end of that seven years, the land was divided by lot to the tribes. So that is the overlay of Exodus and Joshua the, from the giving of the law to the parceling of the lots to the 12 tribes. So you look at this from uh, a world history perspective, and you're starting here with Christ. This is the year that Christ, uh, not the 16 AD, but rather the Jubilee that began in 16 AD. Christ, uh, the transition from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant, occurred in this period of time before this period of time. So uh, in the Jubilee period, this Jubilee cycle beginning 16 AD was the Death and resurrection of Christ, rising in glory. From this point here to this point, from creation to this point is detailed in Luke's account of Jesus' lineage. The, uh, the lineage listed in Matthew is from Abraham to Christ, but in Luke 3, it's from Adam to Christ. So from here to here is sin entering the world through Adam, and the second Adam coming to right the wrong of the first Adam, to die for the sin under the old covenant, to put away the old covenant, and to usher in the new covenant with his death and shed blood on the cross. And again, when you compare the uh, the pattern in the mount, the days, the, the period of days in which Moses came down from the mount, previewing the, the glorified Christ, happened uh, in the same period of time as this shows on the timeline. I hope you understand what I mean when I say that. But the, at the end of the second period of 40, Moses comes down, essentially previewing the glorified Christ. And at the end of this second period of time, that's the actual time period that Jesus was risen in glory. Jesus was prophesied to build the spiritual temple in Zechariah 6. Um, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall build the temple of the Lord, shall bear the glory. He uh, is going to be a priest upon his throne and a king upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So it was a dual prophecy, uh, Jesus combining the order of king and priest after the order of Melchizedek, doing away with the Levitical priesthood because he's the high priest from the tribe of Judah. The law changed, the priesthood changed, and it's after the power of an endless life, which means it's never going to go back. So this is all related to from creation to Christ. Sin and death under the old law, pre-Christ. It's related to the old covenant. Jesus dies for the sins under the old covenant, brings in the new covenant, and then builds the spiritual temple. He says in Matthew, I believe it's 16, he says, Upon this rock, 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You go to Second Peter two, and it talks uh, First Peter two, and it talks all about us being lively stones, build up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that holy and acceptable unto God. So from this point that Jesus rose in glory, actually from the point he died for the sin under the old covenant, and then uh, his death and shed blood on the cross immediately ushered in the new, he has spent these forty jubilees building the spiritual temple until such a time the spiritual temple gets removed and the physical temple gets rebuilt. And then just like the benchmark event in Joshua, where Israel entered the land, and then there was a seven-year conquest for the land, the seven-year, um, the entry into the promised land was the benchmark event, which even started the countdown, the start of the sabbatical cycle countdown, which led to the Jubilees. So that's the benchmark event that starts the count that eventually leads to us knowing which date the 70th week is going to start on because that's what Daniel's prophecy hinges off of. When you shall come into the land and Daniel, uh, the weeks of years start, which lead to the, the declaration of Jubilee, and Daniel's prophecy is predicated upon weeks of years. So this 40 period of 40 Jubilees is Jesus building a spiritual temple. Spiritual temple is going to get removed. Physical temple is going to get rebuilt. And then again, just like Joshua, there was a benchmark event and then a conquest for the land for seven years. Then the land rests from war and lots are parceled to the 12 tribes. Same thing in Ezekiel. You have seven year period bet between Ezekiel 40 through 42, which is the, uh, the vision of the temple, the measuring of the temple and the dimensions of the temple that get rebuilt as covenant confirmation, strength behind covenant confirmation. You have a conquest for the land for seven years. The land rests from war when Jesus comes back and defeats all those who stand against him. And the very last chapter of Ezekiel's vision in chapter 48 is the lots being parceled to the 12 tribes in the kingdom, which is what Daniel 12 ends with, is that Daniel is going to stand in his lot at the end of the days. And that is specifically tied to Ezekiel 48. So this is where I'm going to start with this. Yes, I will write all of this up. But for those of you who are curious, that is how world history gets overlaid by Exodus, Ezekiel, Joshua, Jesus, and Moses.